So for this problem, um, the setup is that there were 62 different households that were visited, one, two, three, four, five, six, dot, 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 all the way down to 62. And then in each of those households, they looked at um, the weights of paper um, versus glass that were, um, so what, how much, uh, what was the weight of the, the total amount of paper that was discarded for the week and the total amount of glass that was discarded. And then, and so you'd get these two numbers, paper and glass, each one of these numbers over here off to the left represented a different household. Um, and so what you end up with is numbers over here for paper on the x-axis or one axis and on the other one for the glass and, and and then what you do is you take each one of those and plot those weights as an x-y coordinate pair and so and the goal here is to look at these values and to try to see if there's some linear correlation between the amount of paper discarded versus the amount of glass. Um, and then once you get that, maybe you'll be able to predict um, for some amount of paper what the output would be for the amount of glass. Now, um, what they've done is we have the correlation coefficient given to us, but it's given to us in this correlation matrix. So a correlation matrix is more commonly used when you're dealing with multiple variables. Um, and so let's take a look at this one that we have. If you wanted to explore more than just you know relationship between two variables, um, then we'd consider using a correlation matrix. Um, and the the way you look at this is, um, let's say that hours spent studying was recorded for a student, and then exam score, and hours spent studying, and IQ score, and so forth. Now. This hours spent studying, um, that's going to be the same. For any given student, that's just a single number. And so that xy value would end up being the same. So there's going to be um, basically a graph where the x values and the y values are one and the same. So of course, you'll get perfect one to one correlation. Um, and so, and then, right, but let's, let's look at maybe hours spent studying versus um, hours spent studying versus exam score versus IQ score, right? So we have these other values. Um, and whether or not when you do your, get your correlation coefficient, it's set up so that it's X versus Y or that it's y versus x, the correlation coefficient ends up being the same. So there's some symmetry here. The, um, the 0.82 is seen to kind of fold along this x, or along this axis. The 0.48 is mirrored. Um, there's a mistake, I think, in this one, that point. 0, 8 should have been point 4, 8. Um, and then the negative 0 0.22, negative 0 0.22, um, right? So all of these values have a corresponding um, value, right? They, um, so it, it, this, this is symmetric. So in a very real sense, we don't need
any of this information here um, since it's going to be perfectly symmetrical. Nonetheless, it's just a way of representing multiple um, variables, more than just two variables. So all of that is just to say that, um, you know, that really paper and how it correlates, you know, that the weights for paper will always correlate um, perfectly. It's a one-to-one. -one. And this will be symmetrical, the 0.1488. So all of this is just simply saying, with, given that we have two variables, the correlation coefficient is 0 0.1488. And that is, in fact, what we're going to take as our test statistic. So those values will always be the same. And there will always be ones on the diagonal. And the test statistic is, uh, is the correlation coefficient itself and that's from the 62 different values. And so what we want to do is investigate whether or not, given that we have the 62 different households, if, um, if there's correlation, like if we can um, hypothesize whether or not there's enough evidence to support this claim um, of, of correlation. And we're going to do this at the alpha equals 0 0.05 significance level. So um, our null hypothesis, our null hypothesis is that there's, for the population as a whole, even though we just have samples, but we're working with not R, but we're going to hypothesize about the population, is that, and so this is a Greek R, what you see here, this row, it's being drawn. And so we're going to hypothesize that there's no correlation. And the alternative hypothesis is that there's some correlation, right? So if there's if rho is equal to zero, then the correlation coefficient looks like this, and it's you know, you just really get no you have no ability to predict um, x or predict y from x, right? When it's a when there's no correlation. So our hypothesis, our alternative hypothesis, is that there is correlation. So this one says, um, if rho equals zero, there's no correlation between household um, weights of paper uh, versus weights of glass. So no, cor no correlation between those two weights. That's our hypothesis. And the alternative is that there is correlation. So this is a two-tailed test. Um, and this, let me go ahead and draw this picture here. And we need two things. We need a critical value. And we need a test statistic to see where it falls um, relative to that critical value and see if it falls into this rejection region. And if it does fall into that rejection region, then we're going to um, reject the null hypothesis here. And we would conclude that there's evidence in favor of correlation. If our test statistic falls short, if it's not in that rejection region, right, if that's where our test statistic ends up, then there's not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Um, and so it looks like there, that in that case, there would mean that there's evidence in support of correlation. So let's see, what are our values? Um, and we want to make this decision at this significance level of alpha equals 0 0.05. So our test statistic is the R value itself. So our test statistic is um, R. Let's write that here, test stat. Our test uh, statistic is R equals 0 0.14. 
88. And our critical value um, and since R and T are related to each other through a formula, this um, can be stated in, or represented in terms of T or R. So it's just a little bit simpler if we just work with um, R values, then we don't have to do the, the, the math to convert to, to T values. So R and negative R are these um, critical values. So how do we figure out what that critical value is? Um, we can go to our table to calculate that. And so if you go to table A6, the critical values of this correlation coefficient at n equals, well, we don't have 62, right? Um, we don't have a number of value of 62, but we do have 60. So if we go in at 60 and using alpha equals 0 0.05, we get 0.254 for our critical value. 0.254 for our critical value there. So let's use that. Our critical is 0.254. So that's positive. This is a two-tailed test, negative 0.254. And then our test statistic falls over here at 0.14. I'll shorten it to 0.149. Um, therefore, we don't fall into the rejection region, um, and so uh, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in failing to, right, we don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So if we're not going to reject it, let's go ahead and grab it. Now. What does it mean by not rejecting it? Right? It, um, it looks like there's no correlation between the two. Right? We didn't have enough evidence to counter that, um, that null hypothesis. So it looks like um, there's not sufficient evidence um, to reject this idea, right? And alternatively, there's not enough evidence to, um, there's not enough evidence, right? Since we're not rejecting the null, there's not enough evidence to say that there's a correlation um, between the weights of paper versus glass. So that statement looks like this here because the absolute value of the test statistic is less than or equal to the positive critical value there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim that there's a linear relationship between the weights of discarded paper and glass at the alpha equals 0.05 significance level <laughs>